Well, hello everybody, John Wall is here on theCUBE. We're continuing our segments here on the AWS Global Startup Showcase. We are at day three of reInvent, and Eric Heng Jing is joining us now. He is the CEO and co-founder of Jupiter One. Um, first off, before we get going, talking about you know, security and big world for you guys, I know, what's your take on the show? What's been going on out here at reInvent? Um, yeah, yeah, reInvent has been one of my favorite shows. There's a lot of people here, there's a lot of topics, of course, it's not just cybersecurity a lot of cloud infrastructure and just technology in general. So you get a lot, you know, if you go walk the floor, you see a lot of vendors, you look at, a, uh, go into the sessions, you actually can learn a lot. But, but you're the hot topic, right? Everybody's <laughs> focused on cyber yeah. big time, and, and with good reason, right? Because uh, as we know, the bad actors are getting even smarter and even faster and even more nimble. That's right. So just paint the, the landscape for me here in general right now as you see uh, security, cloud security in particular, and, and kind of where we are in that battle. Well, we are clearly not winning. So I, I think that in itself is a bit of an uh, interesting problem, mm -hmm. right? So as a, it's not just cloud security. If you think about cybersecurity in general as an industry, it, has, it has not been around for that long, mm -hmm. right? But if you just look at the history of it, uh, we haven't done that well. Mm -hmm. So uh, pick another industry, say medicine, mm -hmm. which has been around forever. And if you look at the history of medicine, well, I would argue it's done tremendously well because mm -hmm. people live longer. Right. When you get sick, you get access to healthcare. And we uh, have cures, we have you solutions. Have, exactly, you have solutions, and, and you can see the trend, even though there are problems in healthcare, of course, right? But the trend is, is good, it, it's going well, but not in cybersecurity. More breaches, more attacks, more attackers. We don't know what the hell we're doing with that many solutions. And you know, that's been one of my struggles as a former CISO and security practitioner for many years. Mm -hmm. You know, why is it that we're not getting better? All right, so I'm going to ask you the question. Yeah. Okay. Why aren't we getting better? You know, how come we can't stay ahead of the curve on this thing? That for some reason it's like whack-a-mole times 100. Every that's time right. we think we solve one problem, we have 100 more that show up over here. Exactly. And we have to address that. And and our attention keeps flitting around. Yeah, I think you said it, right? So because we're taking this whack-a-mole approach and we're looking for the painkiller of the day and you know, mm. we're looking for uh, the band-aids, right? So, and then we ended up, well, I, I think to be fair, to be fair to the industry, the industry moves so quickly. Mm -hmm. Technology in general moves so quickly and security has been playing catch-up over time. Mm -hmm. We're still playing catch-up. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing catch-up, you, you can almost only uh, look at you know, what's the painkiller, of the, what's the band of the day, so mm -hmm. I can stop the bleeding, mm -hmm. right? But I, I do think that we're, we're, at, we're to a point where we have enough painkillers and band-aids and, and we need to start looking at how can we do better fundamentally with the basics and do the basics well? Because a lot of times it's the basics that get you hmm. into trouble. Hmm. So fundamentally, the foundation, I, I, if I hear you right, what you're saying is, um, you know, quick changing industry, right? Things are moving rapidly, yep. but we're, we're not blocking and tackling. We're not doing the X's and O's, and so forget changing, and, and we, we got to get back to the basics That's and right. do those things right. Exactly, you can only that do- That seems so, so simple. It, it seems so simple, but it's so hard, right? So you can, you can think about, you know, uh, even in, in case of building a startup, bu building a company, and, and in order, at, at one point, right, so we're blocking, uh, blocking tackling, and then when, when we grow to a certain size, we have to scale, right? We have to figure out how to scale the business. Mm -hmm. This is the same problem that happens in security as in industry. We've been blocking and tackling for so long, you know, we're, we're, the industry is so young, but we're, we're to a point that we got to figure out how to scale this. Mm -hmm. Scale this in a fundamentally different way. And I'll give you some example, right? So, so what, what, when we say the basics, now it's easy to, to think that, um, say, users should have MFA enabled is one of the basics, mm -hmm. right? Or another basics would be uh, you have uh, endpoint protection on your devices. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's CrowdStrike or Sentinel-1 or Carbon Black or whatever. But the question being, how do you know it is working 100% of the time? Right. How do you know that? How do you know that 100% of the users? You find out after the fact, right? You find out too exactly. late. Exactly, that's right. And how do you know that you have 100% coverage on your endpoints the solutions are not going to tell you because they don't know what they don't know, right? Mm -hmm. If it's not enabled, if it's not, you know, what, what's the negative that you are not seeing? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that, you know, that's in the basics that, that you're not covering. So the fundamentals, it really goes to 
these five questions that I think that nobody has a really good answer for until now. So the five questions goes, what do I have? All right. Is it important? What's important out of the, all yep. of the things I have? You have a lot, right? You could have mm -hmm. millions of things. What are important? Now for those that are important, does it have a problem? Mm -hmm. And if it has a problem, who can fix it? Because the reality is, in, in most cases, security teams are not the ones fixing the problems. They're, they're the ones identifying. You think they're very good at, at recognizing, but not so good at Exactly, identifying the, the owner right. who can fix it. Right. right. Could, it be, could it be business owner, could be engineers. So the, the, the asset ownership identification, right? So, mm -hmm. so these four questions. And, and then over time, you know, whether it's over a week or a month or a quarter or a year, am I getting better? Mm -hmm. Right, and then you just keep asking these questions in different areas and different domains mm -hmm. with a different lens, right? So maybe that's endpoints, maybe that's cloud, maybe mm -hmm. that's you know users, maybe that's uh, product and applications, right? But it really boils boils down to these five questions. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation for any good security program. Mm -hmm. If you can do that well, I think we cover a lot of bases, and we're going to be in much better shape than we have been. All right, so where do you come in then, Jupiter One, in terms of what you're providing? Because um, obviously you've identified this kind of pyramid, right. yes. this hierarchy of, of addressing needs, and I assume, obviously, knowing you as I do, and knowing the company as I do, you've got solutions. That's exactly right. right. And, and we precisely answer those five questions right. for uh, any organization uh, from a asset perspective. Mm -hmm. Right, because all of the, the answers to all of those these five questions are based in assets. It starts with knowing what I have. Right. Right. So the, the overall challenge of cybersecurity being broke broken, I, I believe, is fundamentally that people do not understand and cannot uh, properly deal with the complexity that we have within our own environments. Hmm. So again, like you know, using uh, medicine as an example, right? So in order to come up with the right medicine for either it's a vaccine for COVID-19 or uh, whether it's a treatment for cancer or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Mm -hmm. You have to start with the foundations of understanding both the pathogen and two, the human body, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. DNA sequencing, mm -hmm. right? Without those, you cannot effectively produce the right medicine mm -hmm. in modern uh, you know, medicine, sure. right? So that is the same thing that's happening in cybersecurity. You know, we spend a lot of times, you know, putting band-aids and patches, right? And then we spend a lot of time doing attacker research from the outside. But we don't fundamentally understand in a complete way what's the complexity within our own environment in terms of digital assets. Mm -hmm. And that's that's almost like the DNA of your own work. Well, isn't that kind of mind blowing in a way that, uh, if, again, hearing you, what you're talking about is saying that the first step is to identify what you have. That's right. So it seems just so basic that that I should know what I what's under my hood. I should yeah. know what is valuable and what is not. I should prioritize what I really need to protect and what maybe can go on the second shelf. Yeah. It, it has been a tough problem since the beginning of IT, not just the beginning of cybersecurity, right? So in, in the history of IT, we have this thing called CMDB, Configuration Management Database. It is supposed to capture the configurations of IT assets. Now, over time, that has become a lot more complex and, and there's a lot more than just IT asset mm -hmm. that we have to understand from a security and attack surface perspective. Right, so we have to understand IT environments, we have to understand cloud environments, mm -hmm. and applications, and users, and access, and data, and SaaS, and all of those things. And then we have to take a different approach of sort of a modern CMDB, right? So what is mm -hmm. the way that we can understand all of those complexity within all of those assets, but not just independently within those silos, but rather in a connected way, so we can not only understand the attack surface, but only, but also understand the attack path mm -hmm. that connect the dots from one thing to another, mm -hmm. right? Because everything in your organization is actually connected. If if there's any one thing that sits on an island, right? So if you say you have a a uh, a server or a device or a user that is on an island that is not connected to the rest of the organization, then why have it, right? and it doesn't matter. So it, it, it's the understanding of that connect, connected tissue, this entire map, or this you know, DNA sequencing equivalent of a digital organization mm -hmm. is what Jupyter One provides, right? So that visibility of the fundamental 
you know, very granular uh, level of assets uh, and resources to answer those five questions. And, and how does that, how, how do I get better at that then? I mean, I, I have you to help me, but, but internally within our organization, um, I mean, I, hate, I don't want to be rude, but I mean, do I have, do I have the skill for that? Do I have, um, do I have the, the internal f horsepower for that? Or, yes. or is there some need to close that gap and how do I do it? You know, I'll tell you two things, right? So, so one, you, you mentioned the, the word skills, right? So I don't, let, me, let me start there, So, because this one is very interesting. We also have a huge skills shortage mm -hmm. in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. we, we all, we've all heard that for years and, 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 and for a long time. But if you dig deeper into it, why is that? Why is that? And you know, we have a lot of you know, talented people, right? So why do we still have a skills shortage? Now what's interesting is if you think about what we're asking security people to do, it's mind boggling. So if you, if you get a security analyst to say, hey, I want to understand how to protect something or, mm -hmm. or how to deal with an incident, and what you're asking the person to do is not only to understand the security concept and be a domain expert in security, you're also asking the person to un understand at the same time AWS mm -hmm. or other clouds or endpoints, or code, or applications, so that you can properly do the analysis mm -hmm. and, the, and the response. It's, it's, it's impossible, it's like, you know, right. if you, have, you have to have a person who's an expert in everything. Know everything about everything. That's right, right. It's, it's impossible. So, so, so that's, that's one thing that we have to, to resolve, is how do we use technology, like Jupyter One to provide an abstraction so that there's automation in place to help the security teams be better at their jobs without having to be an expert in deep technology, mm -hmm. right? Just at the abstract level of understanding, because you know we can we can model the data and pr and provide the analysis and visual visualization out of the box for them, so they can focus on just the security practices. Mm -hmm. So that's one. And the second thing is we have to change the mindset. Like take vulnerability management as an example, right? So. The mindset for vulnerability management has been, how do I manage findings? Now we have to change it to the concept of more proactive and how to manage uh, assets. So let's think about, uh, you know, say Log4j, right, that, that happened. And uh, you know, th when it happened, everybody scrambles and say, hey, which, which devices or which you know, uh, systems have Log4j and you know, does it matter, what's the impact, we can fix it, right? Going back to those questions that, that I, I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Right, and then the, um, and then they, they try to look for a solution at a time and say, well, where's that silver bullet that can give me the answers? Now, what 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 we struggle with though is that, you know, I, I want to maybe ask the question: Where, where were you six months ago? Mm -hmm. Where were you six months ago where you could have done the due diligence and put something in place that help you understand all of these assets and connections, mm -hmm. so you can go to one place and just ask for that question when something like that, you know, hit the fan. Mm -hmm. so, so if we do not fundamentally change the mindset to say, I have to look at things not from a reactive findings perspective, but really starting from an asset-centric, you know, day one perspective mm -hmm. to look at that and have this foundation, have this map built, y y we can't get there, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, you know, if I need direction, I go to Google Maps, right? Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the reason that it works is because somebody has done the work of creating the map. Right, <laughs> right. If you, haven't, if you don't have the map, and you just, at, you know, one at a time, you say, I got to go somewhere, and you expect the map to magically happen to show you the direction, not gonna, not gonna it's happen. not going to work. Right, right. I imagine there are a lot of people out there right now are listening to this and thinking, oh boy. <laughs> you know? And yeah. that's what Jupiter One's all about. They're there that's to right. answer your, oh boy. Thanks for the time. Of course. I, I appreciate the insights as well. It's nice to know that uh, at least somebody is reminding us to keep the front door locked too. Not yep. just the back door, the side doors, keep that front door and that garage locked up too. Definitely. Um, all right, we'll continue our coverage here at AWS reInvent 22. This is part of the AWS Global Startup Showcase and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. <laughs>